Let us begin with our entrance antiphon, Psalm 92. The just will flourish like the palm tree and grow like a Lebanon cedar planted in the house of the Lord in the courts of the house of our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to hear God's word and to be nourished at his altar. Lord Jesus, you cast down the mighty from their thrones. Lord, have mercy. You lift up the lowly and the poor. Christ, have mercy. You fill the hungry with good things. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure that in the name of your beloved Son, we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, looked, and there was the Lamb standing on Mount Zion, and with him 144,000 who had his name and his Father's name written on their foreheads. I heard a sound from heaven, like the sound of rushing water or a loud peal of thunder. The sound I heard was like that of harpists playing their harps. They were singing what seemed to be a new hymn before the throne, before the four living creatures and the elders. No one could learn this hymn except the 144,000 who had been ransomed from the earth. These are the ones who follow the Lamb wherever he goes. They have been ransomed as the first fruits of the human race for God and the Lamb. On their lips no deceit has been found. They are unblemished. The word of the Lord. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Lord, these are the people that longs to see your face. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, and the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? He whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is in vain. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God, Jacob. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When Jesus looked up, he saw some wealthy people putting their offering into the treasury, and he noticed a poor widow putting in two small coins. He said, I tell you truly, this poor widow put in more than all the rest. 
for those others who have made, all made their offerings from their surplus wealth, but she, from her poverty, has offered her whole livelihood. The Gospel of the Lord. This woman in today's gospel remains unnamed, yet we read about her now down through uh, into the third millennium. And she is this one who is praised by Jesus in contrast to those who have made their offerings from their surplus wealth. He doesn't exactly, he doesn't praise them at all, but rather acknowledges her, her insignificant status of the, in society at that time, being a woman, being a widow, of no substance at all, uh, and she is the one who should be receiving that which is given to the temple treasury. After all, it was given to help those who were needy. But in a way, she turns the tables. She turns the tables because in contrast to those who are wealthy, she is this uh, devoted uh, follower of Jesus. And she gives her of her livelihood uh, to uh, sustain the work, the good works of the temple and what happens coming out of the temple treasury. That's why Jesus praises her, because she is this one who is the example of this devoted servant of the Lord. She has overcome any kind of pride or selfishness, and she humbly acknowledges her lot in life and still is very generous. She would be counted among those that we hear in the book of Revelation, the 144,000, those who are symbolic of all those who will uh, be caught up in the great glory of heaven. It's not a mathematical count, that 144,000. Uh, some would say because of the 12 tribes of Israel, it's that uh, 12,000 from each tribe. Uh, regardless of trying to do the math, it symbolizes that great multitude who will be gathered together uh, at the end of time, those who have been ransomed by the Lamb, for those who have, have won that, that victory because of Jesus' victory over sin and death. Every time we gather for the Eucharist, we are confronted with and comforted by uh, the sacrifice of Jesus, confronted because we too are called to make that same kind of sacrifice, to hold nothing back like the widow in today's gospel but also comforted because of those who make the sacrifice, Jesus himself, who has won the victory that we one day will be able to share in that victory. And so our lives are to be caught up in following the Lord Jesus wholeheartedly, uh, to let go of any kind of, of selfishness, self-centeredness, and be humble servants of the Lord. We do that not just in word, but also in deed that we are attentive to those who are needy and poor in our midst so that we can live after the example of what we read in the gospel today and ultimately after the example of Jesus himself who held nothing back to give his all uh, to save us. To our God, who is attentive to the prayers of his people, uh, let us lift up these petitions. For church leaders, may the Holy Spirit continue to strengthen them in shepherding their flocks, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders throughout the world, may God bless their efforts to end hatred and violence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those facing persecution for the sake of righteousness, may the Father grant them strength and comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may the love of Christ help us to sow seeds that bear much fruit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, especially Jenny Gennart, they may live forever in the joy of heaven with all the angels and saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who find little to be thankful for uh, this week, those who are poor, the unemployed or underemployed, uh, those who are going to food pantries and soup kitchens to meet their daily needs, for them we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty, ever-living God, it is your strength that directs us and helps us along the way to be your faithful disciples. Grant these prayers now that we humbly ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, and will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you lift up your hearts let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Holy Father Lord of heaven and earth through Christ our Lord for by your word you created the world and you govern all things in harmony you gave us the same word as made flesh as mediator and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your son, whom you, through your son, you gather men and women whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of the cross and signed with the seal of the spirit. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the angels, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, 
take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that, by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son and confirm us in the bond of communion, together with Francis our Pope, and Thomas John our Bishop, with all the other bishops, with priests and deacons and your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the Church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may be faithful in bringing them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The communion antiphon from Luke 12. This is the steward, faithful and prudent, whom the Lord set over his household to give them their allowance of food at the proper time.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. The Mass is ended.